We need to talk about Mabry Metoyer. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Uh, really do appreciate everybody tuning in as always. By week, I wanted to take a second and just talk a little bit about do a bit of a recruit check-in, not comprehensive. I have a bigger show coming up where I'm going to like really dive into every recruit in the 24 class. How is their high school season going? Try to get some maybe their coaches looped in on that. But I wanted to do kind of a quick bi-week check-in on a few players that have really stood out, in my opinion. Um, let's start with Mabry Metoyer, right? The 24 quarterback commit out of uh, Texas, the Woodlands. And it's interesting because when he committed, there was a lot of, deserve it hype right uh, six five six six i mean he looks he looks the part he came from the same factory the same mold that built trevor lawrence like he has that type of look like long angular fast athletic big arm big frame the type of guy who can be a running quarterback in the college level and it's not going to make you clutch your pearls every time he takes a hit because you're worried he's going to get broken in half like that's not mabry uh his dad when he, his dad was on the show and talked about it and said you know he'll run a cornerback over now he'll be smart about it but he'll run the dude over if he has to. He has that type of physical presence on the field that looks like he is cut out of quarterback factory mold, right? Like he is, that's what you want a quarterback to look like. And then, you know, he had a big arm. He's he fast, a good runner, dual threat guy. So a lot of hype. This is the guy, uh, Mabry, who, if everything hits, if he hits his ceiling, gosh, friends, this, this is a game changer. Like, and we, we talked about that. Now, will he hit his ceiling? We're not sure. Uh, I've had several people on the show, both his dad and some recruiting experts talk about it's about the finer points of playing quarterback with Mabry, um, the touch on the intermediate throws, learning how to feather and passes at different levels, right? Not everything is a, a fastball, et cetera, et cetera. So there's mechanical stuff to clean up, but if he hits his ceiling, this is a game changer franchise type of talent at quarterback that Wisconsin landed. Um, and the season started off, this is this is what we want to do, a bit of a recruiting check-in, just how has the season gone so far. And it started off, Mabry had two games that I had Badger fans talk to me. We talked about it on our Discord, which is uh, down below if you want to join the Discord. We talked about it on the Discord, and people said, yeah, I don't know, like, you know, not great games from Mabry. You know, is, was, this, was he oversold a little bit? This is where I need to insert context. So Mabry's first two games against North Shore and Lamar. North Shore is 5-0 and and is the number two, according to Max Preps, the number two ranked team in Texas right now in 6A. They're a beast. <laughs> like, And then Lamar is 6-0 and and the number 16 ranked team in Texas in 6A right now. So he opened the season against two just monster programs. Didn't turn the ball over. Didn't look the greatest, but he opened against two incredibly talented high school teams. And what has he done since then? The next game... Uh, 20 for 28, 410 yards, six touchdowns with 105 rushing yards and one touchdown. Again, these stats are according to Max Preps. Um, then he had a, another big win. Uh, the following week after that, they won 55 to 2 against Conroe. Three touchdowns, no picks. Um, he just had a homecoming game where he threw five touchdowns. Jake Kokorowski was reporting on that one, so the credit for the stats go to him on that one. So basically, since he opened the season, the bigger point is here, since he opened the season against two incredibly tough teams, he has been on fire, Badger fans. This is this is some of the best news from the recruiting front because you want to get your quarterback early, but then you hope he continues developing, right? Like that's, that's the dual-edged sword with getting a quarterback early is you're kind of locking into that guy and hoping his senior season progresses the way you think it is, hoping his season, season, senior season progresses the way his physical tools say it should. And Mabry has like flipped the switch here after those first two kind of tough games. He still hasn't thrown a pick this year. I know it's something Justin and I talk about, but big physical. And now the he's been so good really the last four games of his senior season. You got to be incredibly excited about this Badger fans because again, he's a guy. There's a lot of good Badger quarterbacks I like right now that are either in the program or coming. I've talked about Locke. I like Locke a lot. I've talked about LaCrue. I like LaCrue a lot. Um, Nick Evers. Listen, I, I think he has an uphill battle, but he has incredible physical tools for a quarterback. And certainly there's still time for him to kind of put it all together. Um, I like Braden Locke coming down the road, right? Uh, but listen, um, this Mabry Mentor has different physical type of skill set and size than, than all of them. And 
and if he hits the ceiling, it's going to be incredible. So be very excited that it looks like he has flipped that, not flipped that switch, but his production this year has been really, really good. And that's something to be incredibly excited about. A couple more players that, that popped off to me or looked, popped off to me is the wrong term, but that I was impressed with watching some of their senior film. Dylan Johnson, the defensive tackle that they flipped from Northwestern. Uh, when he were, when he signed, I, I remember we talked about it on the show and we liked it, right? This was a plan, a guy that Luke Fickle, Scruggs targeted. I was a little surprised when he went to Northwestern. So this is somebody they were on right away. Holds the weight really well. A great wrestler. You know, Fickle obviously understands the importance of that. Kanye Benton was a great wrestler. Uh, so Dylan's a great wrestler. Holds the weight really well. Moves well. But the thought was maybe this is kind of a high floor, low ceiling prospect. Somebody can play early. We know he can put on the weight, but we're not really sure about the burst. He's looked pretty good his senior year. It's better than probably I gave him credit for. Um, I still think the high floor is there, but maybe it's even a higher ceiling than I'd originally give him credit for. I think he could play early. I think he's going to be needed to play early. He's already carrying the weight. Um, he's got some senior film out that I think is pretty good. So Dylan Johnson is somebody I'm excited about watching more of him. A um, couple of the running backs, Darian Dupree, star. Darian Dupree is going to be a star in this offense. Um, you know, you, you watch him, some of his senior film, play for a really good Mount Carmel team. Mount Carmel? Mount Carmel team. Um, in Illinois, you watch some of the film and everything that we talked about when he committed, you see, right? The content balance, the explosiveness, really hard to get down in space. I think Darian Dupree is going to be a star, like what I've seen from him so far. Uh, Gideon Atuka, I've talked about this uh, with Atuka, and I talked to someone around the program who said, yeah, he's he's really good. He's just overshadowed by Dupree and Jones. I agree with that. Like, I when he committed, I liked it because I think he brings something different. He's like a bowling ball that moves pretty well. Like he's really good. He had a 250 yard, 250 ish yard game earlier this year. Getting a two is a guy who, because of Jones, because of Dupree, because of the running backs in this class gets overshadowed. I think he's an important part of this class and I'm really excited for him as well. So that's a couple of players that stuck out to me. I know Kyan Barry Johnson is at his moments. Um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm going to do a bigger show. So if I didn't talk about somebody, don't think it's because I don't like what they've done their senior year or, or they've fallen off. I just wanted to highlight a couple of players, specifically Mabry Metoyer and the absolute tear he is on right now. And to add some context for those first two games, which were against top 15 ish high school programs in the highest level of high school football. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Whenever you see box scores, someone says, ah, oh, he was 11 to 22, whatever it is in one of those first two games. Competition varies greatly at the high school level, right? So, yeah, I, I think maybe mentor is right on track and exceeding track. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. Some of your thoughts, plus a couple stats uh, for players on the football team. Am I buying or selling that for the rest of the year? We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, today's first uh, Friends of the Show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn is America's number one source for professional talent development, marketing, and you got to put the, together the right pieces. Every hire is a high stakes wager. And you need the right pieces on the football field to build your championship team, championship team. And you need the right pieces in the office to build your championship corporate team. That's what LinkedIn is here for. So yeah, simple tools, screening processes, gets people out of there that have no business interviewing for your job and gets the right candidates with the right skills and experience quickly in the door so you can prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses continue to rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs lets you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Today's show also brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is uh, the official sports betting partner of the NFL, America's number one sports book. It's a great time to do it. New customers bet $5, get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's free bonus bets just for betting $5. Plus, you get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket with your $5 bet. From YouTube and YouTube TV, now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player prompts and more, and futures. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official betting partner of the NFL. All right, I want to say again, thank you to everybody tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Um, let's let's talk a few about a few stats here. Are we buying or selling this trend for the rest of the year? And the, the question is kind of framed around player X has these numbers right now. Do I continue that trend to continue? Do I expect that can trend to continue over the next eight games of the college football season? Right. Tanner Mordecai, two touchdowns and three picks. Am I buying or selling on that trend continuing? I'm obviously selling that because if that continues, the dude's going to end up with like eight touchdowns and 16 picks. That's not going to happen. There's been some weird ones. Quite frankly, if Sky Bell just catches two passes, he has four touchdowns and two picks, right? 
I mean, drops happen everywhere, but those are pretty egregious ones that uh, most college quarterbacks, their receivers make for them. So he's been so close on a couple of Bryson Green ones, a CJ Williams one, those Sky Bell ones. It's going to flip around. In fact, I think as I, I think I did this on a prediction show, I expect a couple big um, Tanner Mordecai games coming up still. So I am selling that trend continuing. Uh, Braylon Allen, 7.13 yards per carry. Sell, sell, sell. I'm selling that trend. Listen, competition is going to get harder. He's going to have less help in the backfield. Um, I think teams are going to, if you, if you come in with a running back, this is just is what it is, right? This is smart defensive coordinators. If you come in with a running back averaging seven yards per carry and a quarterback with more interceptions and touchdowns, teams are going to focus on stopping Braylon Allen and make Tanner Mordecai beat them. So I, I don't think Braylon Allen finishes with a, a yards per carry of over seven for the season. I would put it in like the six and a half, six point two 6.2 range. I think it's going to come down about a yard, which is still really good. That's a really good year. But you're going to play an Iowa team. You're going to play a Rutgers team who has a surprising good defense, but surprisingly good defense, by the way. It's going to get more difficult for the most part. So I am selling the 7.13 yards per carry over the remainder of the season. Bryson Green, eight catches so far, 83 yards, zero touchdowns. If you extrapolate that out, you're looking at maybe 20-something catches, um, 200 yards, no touchdowns, maybe a little bit more than that. I am selling that. I think it, the numbers are going to be better. I think it's going to be better. I think we've already seen moments, again, talking about the closeness, and people don't want to say here ifs, ands, and buts. We're almost there, but it's going to get better. They're right there. They're on the fringe of connecting on some big stuff, I believe, with Mordecai and Bryson Green. And Bryson Green wasn't brought here to catch 20 passes for 200 yards and no touchdowns this year. That's not the vision, and that's not the talent that I think he has. Now, I'm, it's not going to be the year that we expected. All right? It's not going to be that year, but it's definitely going to be better than what we've seen so far. So I'm I'm selling on that number. Last one here, James Thompson with three sacks so far. Buy or sell him leading the team in sacks at the end of the year because he currently is. His three sacks lead the team. I'm selling that, although I could see him finishing with five or six, which is a great year for James Thompson Jr. as a strong 10 defensive end in the scheme. More than I thought he would have. Um, if he gets beyond six, like that's that's incredible for him uh, in, in this scheme where he's, what he's, with what he's asked to do. But I'm going to sell him leading the team. I still think it's going to be one of the linebackers. I think it's probably going to be Cheney is going to be my guess there. Cheney's got two. James Thompson has three right now. So that's where I'm going to go on that one. I'm going to sell that one. A couple quick comments from you guys. Uh, this is from Will Hanna. If they get Tyler Wall from two years ago, they certainly can contend for a Big Ten title. I agree. I, I think I'm on an island on this the way a lot of Badger fans have responded to my basketball optimism. And I could be wrong, right? That's just my take. It doesn't have to be everyone else's take. I'm totally good with different takes on this show. I don't think people are re are understanding the fact that experience. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm not. That sounds a little arrogant. But what I will say is, I think people are maybe underrating the fact that experience really matters in college basketball. And you look at this team and Max Klesman again coming off the bench. He's going to have 60 career starts coming off the bench. Chucky Hepburn has been a starter for three years. Tyler Wall is coming back with a crazy amount of experience. Steven Crowell, a lot of experience. Even some of the bench guys, a lot of experience. This is a really experienced team. I like the transfer of AJ Store, and I like the freshmen they're bringing in. If you get that Tyler Wall from two years ago, they're going to be able to beat anybody on any given day in the Big Ten outside of maybe – I just don't know how they match up with, with Edie. Uh, it's not a good matchup for them, but I think they can beat anybody on any given day in the Big Ten. Now, there are teams that can obviously beat Wisconsin on any given day as well, but I agree with you, Will Hanna. I think it's a good comment. This is from Ryan, um, one of the many Ryans in the lockdown community. Appreciate you branching out and covering UW Volleyball. They're a lot of fun to watch, and with potential to make a championship run every year, it's worth as much attention as possible. No, thank you, Ryan. Listen, it's something I definitely want to do. It's not going to be – I want to set expectations. I have bandwidth restrictions. Um it is not going to be an every week thing probably, but I would like to do at least every other week some type of cumulative sports wrap-up or volleyball. So expect more of that type of content. We had a women's basketball feature recently as well. I, I definitely want to consider giving coverage to the sports that deserve it. Obviously, all of them do, but specifically like volleyball, women's hockey. Uh, certainly those sports are incredible institutions at Wisconsin, and they deserve the coverage. I 100% agree with you on that last point, Ryan. Thomas Miller says Blackwell has to be better than Kamari exclamation point. Don't be surprised if Klesman starts over Connor Sejan. 
Uh, this is from Thomas Miller, who has been on a lot of comments on the show. As always, Thomas, I really appreciate the perspective and insight. He always has really, really good takes and really good original thoughts. I do think Blackwell's better than going to be better than Kamari this year. So I agree with you on that one. Um, I can't see Klesman starting over Connor Seijin. I just can't. I think that's an easy way to tick off a young star who would probably – this is not me speaking for Connor, but I think that's an easy way to lose a young star in the transfer portal. Klesman has already transferred. Like uh, People may not want to hear this perspective on it, but you have to play this game. Right. Who's more likely to transfer if Klesman is on the bench and Connor starting or if Connor's on the bench and Klesman starting. Right. Klesman's already transferred once. Connor still has a transfer in his back pocket. I'm just saying it matters. Right. I, I think Klesman is fine coming off the bench. He's going to play starterish minutes. Um, he's more of a veteran presence. I like him in that role. I just want to mess with it with Connor. I just want personally. Um Coming on, Clink says, last year I had hope for Marcus Silver. He is not afraid to jack up a shot, but I found some of the shot selection very questionable, and he has always looked a bit lost in the court to me. Yeah, that was one of my biggest disappointments last year, Commandant. I agree with you. I, I had high hopes for Silver as well. I thought I thought the athleticism, size, and shooting ability would translate better, but he would just jack up shots. And I don't <laughs> – like the, I like the – I, I like the quick trigger. I, I like I like the confidence, but it, it just felt like he didn't have a feel. And a feel is a hard thing to teach, right? He, you have to have some feel. And then defensively, I don't think I don't know where he fits, right? I don't think he's quick enough to guard on the perimeter. I don't think he's a rim protector. I don't think he's big enough to guard on the post. I think that's going to always be a problem for him at a school like Wisconsin, where defensive fundamentals is just so important. So, uh, I, I think if you look at last year's team and comment on, you mentioned this as well in your comment. They needed depth and help so badly. And if Ilver, excuse me, if Ilver couldn't find minutes on that team with Gilmore and, and those players playing, I struggle to think that there's a big future there. I hope so. I cheer for everybody. Like if he comes out and he blows up and he improved dramatically this offseason, I'll be the first person buying Marcus Silver jerseys and getting the fat head of him on the wall, you know, jacking up the quarter, the corner shots. But I just doubt it. I don't see it. So I agree with you on that one, coming on. For everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, probably do a live show tonight as well. Really appreciate everybody tuning in on Wisconsin, and uh, let's go.